In this video I will show how to assemble an Ether Sweep controller. The bots are designed to be easy to assemble, but also to be as cheap as possible to manufacture. Therefore, most SMD parts are pre-assembled, but KHD components have to be soldered by hand. When you order the bots from a PCB manufacturer, you will get two bots that are connected with a bridge between them. You have to cut them with a saw and file or sand the edges. This is to make manufacturing and assembly cheaper. On the project second aid page I created a list of all missing components you have to buy separately. When you order the bots assembled and buy all the components I listed, you end up somewhere less than 200 euros for 5 Ethersweep controllers. Assembly for one Ethersweep controller takes around 30 minutes to one hour. When I ordered the bots for this prototype, the Atmega 3 to 8 cost around 60 euros, so this is why I sold them by hand. As the prices are lower now, they can be directly ordered in the SMT assembly process again. The only SMD parts you have to solder are the AS5600 magnetic encoder and the reset button. All the parts you have to solder are more or less self-explanatory, but the encoder has polarity, so pay attention to the dot on the package. The buck converter also has to be soldered in the right orientation. When you solder the display make sure to leave enough space to the Ethernet connector pins and add a bit of Kapton tape to avoid shorts. Once everything is assembled the bots should look like this. Next step is to program the board. Before you can upload firmware via USB, you have to burn the Arduino bootloader to the board using an ISP. You can simply plug it into the pin header of the board with the Atmega 328. Under tools you should select these parameters. Burning the bootloader can take a few seconds. After the bootloader has been burned onto the microcontroller, you can remove the connector and program the board via USB. But when you do so, both boards have to be connected as the reset pull-up resistors on the display slash Ethernet board, unfortunately. Now the Ethersweep controller behaves like a normal Arduino Pro Mini. By selecting the right board, you can upload the Ethersweep firmware. And ta-da! Just like that you have successfully built and programmed your first Ethersweep controller. The controller won't boot properly and there will be an error message on the serial monitor. But this just says that it can't find an encoder magnet. So the next step is to bolt the controller to a NEMA 17 motor and put a magnet on the motor shaft. To do so you have to remove all four screws from the NEMA 17 motor. We have to cut four M3 threaded rods to length. Clean the edges and thread the brass standoffs in the ends. Then we glue the magnet on the motor shaft and the rest is basically assembly. In hardware version 3.0.4 the motor cable order is from left to right red, green, black, blue. 
for version 3.0.5 and above it will be blue, green, red, black. But there will be a custom connector anyway. After the boards are successfully assembled you should play around with it and test the example sketch from the GitHub repository. I hope this was somewhat insightful and show how an Etherscript controller is assembled. The keycard files also provide all information about components, placement, part numbers and orientation. On top, the keycard 3D preview also makes assembly a lot easier. If you have any questions or thoughts, please don't hesitate to write a comment. Additionally, I have to say that I'm very grateful for all the comments and messages people write me. The feedback I get from the community is amazing and keeps me working on this project, so thank you.